Hello everybody. Today we're going to be talking about Jameson Irish Whiskey, specifically the Standard Jameson as well as the Select Reserve Black Barrel. So hopefully last week you had a chance to pick up a bottle or two, go grab them, get a couple of glasses, and meet me back here for a drink on the Whiskey Dictionary. Now, Jameson Irish Whiskey is, not surprisingly, considered to be an Irish Whiskey. But what does that mean? Well, basically, there's some very loose criteria in order to call yourself an Irish Whiskey. You need to be distilled and aged in Ireland. You need to be aged for at least three years in wooden casks no larger than 700 liters. You also need to be distilled 94.8% alcohol by volume. You need to be based off of a yeast fermented mash. and uh, use cereal grains. Also, if your whiskey is blended, you need to mark it somewhere on the bottle. Other than that, you can call yourself an Irish whiskey. Uh, now, how it's made. Now, in a future video, I'm going to talk about all different kinds of whiskeys and how they're made and whatnot, but for now, I'll give you a general idea. So, uh, Jameson is made off of barley, using barley. Uh, what they do is they take some barley, they steep it in water from the Dungorny River, and they let it uh, start to germinate. They then take it out of the water, spread it all out, let it continue to grow for a while, then they mix it with unmalted barley, uh, so barley that hasn't germinated yet, and corn, and uh, they mill it all up, they add some water uh, from that Dungorny River again, um, some yeast, and then they distill it in one of their three pot stills, uh, which then goes through you know, the second one and then the third one as well, thus the triple distilled. Um, after this, it's aged in sherry casks, or bourbon barrels, or uh, port pipes. Now those are just fancy words for different sized barrels. Um, now this bottle right here is their standard Jameson. Uh, it's kind of like their, I don't want to say low end, because it's not bad, but you'll see this in every single bar. It's very, very common. It's not quite as smooth as some, some uh, higher priced uh, whiskeys, but Frankly, a 750 milliliter bottle is 30 bucks, so it is what it is. What it is. But let's uh, go ahead and pour this. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice compared to last week's episode of Jack Daniels is the color. Now, this whiskey, and I'll hold it up for you here in a second, this whiskey is significantly lighter in color than the Jack Daniels last week, and that's partly uh, because of that triple distilling. Um, so go ahead and take a, uh, take a smell of this and, you know, let me know what you smell. Personally, I smell something kind of sweet. You can get a hint of the, uh, the oak barrel that it was, uh, started in. And, uh, hmm. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> um, if you smell something different, feel free, leave it in the comments. I'm curious, because I don't claim to have the best nose for this yet. I'm working on it, though. Um, go ahead and have a have a sip, and uh, we'll talk about what we taste. Cheers. All right. Now, first thing you'll probably notice is, although it's not considerably smooth, it is probably smoother than a lot of the other types of whiskeys that you drink, especially if you're you know just starting out. Um, part of that is because of that once again that triple distilling. Now, something that you're going to taste in there is probably some vanilla, which you'll, you'll tend to notice whenever something's aged in an oak barrel. Um, let's see. You might also get a hint of um, the sherry barrels that it's, it's you know, spent some time in as well, although that's, that's definitely an undertone. Um, if you're tasting that, good for you. <laughs> Personally, I'm just barely getting a hint of it. Um, now, I personally didn't buy this bottle. This was given to me as a present at my bachelor party a little while ago. And uh, my brother-in-law, Evan, he set up my, he was the best man at my bachelor party. And he set up this whole awesome thing. He basically, he rented a place on Cape Cod, uh, right on the beach. And this is like a really, really, really nice house. Invited my dad and my future father-in-law, as well as my future brother-in-law, a bunch of friends and everything, and told everybody to bring me some whiskey or 
some sort of liquor. So I got, I think like five or six bottles of whiskey and then a bottle of uh, uh, rum, a couple of other little things. And uh, honestly, it was an awesome time. But the night, dis the night progressed as it should have. Um, my future father-in-law brought me this guy and uh, somehow it found its way at the end of the night. We, we were all down at this beach and there was this big bonfire and uh, somehow this bottle found its way down there. Now my awesome brother-in-law Evan, he was like, hey Bill, I got you another beer. Hands me the bottle. Now I was pretty much obliterated at the time, uh, staring at the fire, probably uh, contemplating if I should jump over it or something silly like that. And uh, you know, he hands me the, the, the bottle and I immediately turn it up and uh, take a couple of huge chugs and uh, didn't take me very long to figure out that it wasn't beer, but it certainly took me long enough to um, prolong my uh, mental state <laughs> for quite some time. Uh, it was a pretty awesome time though. And uh, so I'd like to take one more sip and uh, toast Evan for trying to kill me. <laughs> Evan. All right, so let's move on to this bottle here. Now you probably haven't seen this one because it's actually pretty rare in the United States. This is called the um, Black Barrel Select Reserve. And uh, what they do is they only distill this once a year. So let's go ahead and pour some. The reason they call it Black Barrel is because they char the barrel that they're going to age it in one extra time. Uh, now, these barrels come from Kentucky, most likely from that Jack Daniels plant that we were talking about last, year, uh, last week. They, uh, they send those barrels all over the place. Now, this barrel, you'll notice the difference in color, considerably different. This actually looks a lot more like Jack Daniels. Uh, still a little lighter than Jack, but anyway. Um, on the website, they say that you're supposed to be able to smell some exotic fruits like apricots and nectarines and papaya. Uh, personally, I can smell the citrus out of here, but um, go ahead and give it a smell and see what you think. Much, much different than the regular standard uh, Jameson, huh? So, alright, go ahead and give it a taste. Cheers. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice is way smoother than the regular Jameson. Considerably smoother. It's uh, not that impressive of a flavor. However, um, you're, you can kind of pick up some vanilla and some more wood as, as you do with this. The main difference really is that very, very slight undertone of a, like a citrusy flavor, which I'm not sure where it comes from. I'm guessing probably like the port barrels or something. Um, but I don't know. If you're tasting something else, once again, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear. Um, anyway, this is only like $35, and uh, just doing my research for this, this video, um, I've already drank about this much. So even though the flavor itself isn't fantastic, it's not going to blow you away, it is a very good whiskey to just kind of have around the house. I kind of like it, and I like the fact that it's rare. So anyway, let's talk about the other offerings that Jameson offers. They've got the 12-year-old, the 18-year-old, the Signature Reserve, the Gold Reserve, and then the Rarest Vintage Reserve. Now, I didn't get any of those because, frankly, they're kind of expensive. I certainly wouldn't mind getting some, but, uh, you know, I'll save them for another video, maybe further down the line when I'm reviewing some more top-end stuff. Because the, uh, the Rarest Vintage Reserve, it's like $300 a bottle. I certainly wouldn't mind getting one. Um, but I'd like to develop my palate a little bit more before I bother waste, uh, not wasting, spending that kind of money on a bottle. So, uh, why don't you go ahead, enjoy your whiskey, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about the history of Jameson. So, John Jameson, you know, he's the guy you've heard, you've probably seen some commercials, uh, little, little crazy, uh, like tall tale commercials, they're pretty cool actually. Um, that John Jameson, he was born in 1740. Now the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that John Jameson was Scottish. He was born in Scotland. Uh, he moved over to Ireland um, at some point in his youth and he, uh, he ended up starting to work for this guy named John Stein at the Bow, um, what is it, Bow Street Distillery over in Dublin. Now he worked underneath him for about 25 years or so and then eventually bought, <clears throat> bought the distillery. Now, 
The thing I like the most about this particular brand of uh, whiskey so far <clears throat> is that if you want to talk about the history, you pretty much just have to look at the bottle. They've actually done you the service of telling you everything about the whiskey on the bottle. Um, hopefully you guys can see this. If not, look at the bottle that you have yourself. But um, first thing you'll notice is there's a little icon here, a uh, little logo, and there's a ship on the top. Now the ship is to represent um, Jameson's ancestors in the 1500s. They fought pirates on the high seas, you know. So uh, they did a very good job of this, apparently. They, they won many battles, and they were granted this slogan. Um, I'm gonna, I might mispronounce this, so it's Seen Me Too, which uh, means without fear. Now, Jameson, you know, uh, I'm sure it's part of the tale of Jameson, but he considered this his personal motto. So when he grew up in Scotland, he, he moved and uh, he considered uh, his family's slogan when buying this, or inherit, or not inheriting, when buying this distillery. He was like, you know, without fear, just, just go for it. Um, I think that's kind of cool. So um, that's what the ship stands for, and that's what this scene, uh, scene me too means. Next, we have triple distilled. That's pretty obvious. They triple distill all of their whiskeys. Now, something I only learned just today actually was this number up at the top here. Uh, what is it? JQ058548. When you see that, you might think, um, you know, registration number or uh, batch number or whatever. Now that number hasn't changed in a lot of years, and it did used to mean batch number, but after a while they stopped keeping track on the bottles, probably for price reasons, and they just left that particular one. So any bottle that you see, this bottle's got it as well. Um, they all have the JQ058548. Uh, after that, like I mentioned earlier, it says it's a blend, so that alone, uh, it's adhering to that Irish whiskey. Um, there's also on the bottom, there's an etching of two men, and there's one on both sides here. And uh, what that represents, it's a, it's a man carrying a bottle. And back when uh, John Jameson started the distillery, he hired a whole bunch of workers, and he paid them extremely, extremely well. In fact, it was one of the better paying jobs in the area. And he um, kind of has an homage on the bottle to them uh, because he believed that, that paying attention to your workers and paying them more would make them more loyal. So this same print is on every bottle that's, uh, sorry, every barrel that is aging in the uh, warehouses as well. Um, so at the bottom, you probably can't read it through here if you've been able to read any of these things uh, over the video. You see the Bow Street Distillery in Dublin. Now, um, that's obviously where they used to be based. Uh, they actually are in Cork now, Cork, uh, Cork Ireland. Um, but the old, sorry, the old Bow Street Distillery is actually uh, where they give tours and everything now. So if you've ever taken a tour of the Jameson Distillery, that's probably where it was. Um, anyway, going more into the history, uh, John Jameson had a son, John Jameson II. Uh, it's apparently a, a very widely accepted Irish tradi tradition to name your son after yourself. Um, so John Jameson II inherited the distillery and ended up making it one of the largest distilleries in Ireland. Uh, he's also got a little bit of a negative past, which if you're interested, you can look into yourself. I'm not gonna bother going into it here. Um, so then uh, John Jameson II had a son, John Jameson III, who then inherited the distillery and ended up bringing uh, Jameson into the global sphere. Um, at that point, you could find it most anywhere around the globe, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't renowned. It wasn't like a household name or anything at that point until John Jameson IV came along, uh, really did a lot with marketing and, and basically brought John, uh, Jameson Irish whiskey to the forefront of Irish whiskeys. It's now considered the, you know, best Irish whiskey in the world um, sorry, best is the wrong word, but it's definitely the most popular. Um, you cannot go into a bar without finding Irish whiskey by Jameson. Anyway, so that, uh, that about wraps up what we've got for uh, Jameson Irish whiskey. I hope that you enjoyed your whiskey. Uh, I'm going to finish these after I shut off the camera here. Uh, so if you liked what you saw, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Um, it's only going to encourage me to buy some more whiskeys and talk about them. 
So I certainly enjoy that. Uh, also, hopefully I can provide some decent content for you and uh, you know, maybe you'll have a decent excuse to go buy yourself some whiskey as well. So uh, next week, I'm going to be talking about the Woodford Reserve. Now this is one of my personal favorites. This is the Distiller Select. It's a bourbon. Um, they make several different kinds. However, I'm specifically going to be talking about this one, and I'm going to save some of their other whiskeys for other videos. Um, so hopefully you have a great week and enjoy your whiskey. Cheers.